Well, Jason Nichols is right in the middle of this debate. He's an actual professor. He teaches African-American studies at the University of Maryland and a frequent guest on this show. Professor, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me, Tucker. So it seems like kind of a would be a baseline for a university to have pretty much absolute freedom of speech, a prerequisite for freedom of thought. Like, what's the point of having colleges if you can't say whatever you think? Well, I think, number one, in society, we don't have complete freedom of speech. True. Of course, you, you know, there's libel, there's defamation, there is, uh, you know, threats of, uh, of violence and, yes. and inciting violence. Yes. Those are limits on free speech. So I think we have this idea that freedom of speech means that you can say anything at any no, time. No, no, we know what it is because... Brandenburg versus Ohio in 1967, the famous Supreme Court case, very specifically outlined the boundaries of free speech. And okay. so libel is not allowed, of course. Imminent threats of violence are not allowed. But everything else is allowed. Everything else is allowed. And you would think, but it's not allowed at Apple or Amazon or some big authoritarian company. But colleges exist to be an oasis in the middle of our commercial society for free thinking. So I, I, why would they be the places where free thinking is punished most aggressively? No, I, I agree that, you know, there, there are many cases, and you and I actually discussed, you know, a, a case a little while ago where there was a college professor who said something he shouldn't have said, and then all of a sudden people are talking about, oh, he needs to be fired, try to, this is why we actually have tenure. Right. It is, you know, to protect people so that they can say what it is that they want. But there have been all these attacks, there are these people who are trying to put limits on what it is you say, and I think that that's, uh, you know, problematic, but... You know, I think overall, colleges do protect freedom of speech. So what they would happen if you freedom. went in, into your class and said, yeah, I, I kind of like that Donald Trump. And what do I like about him? I like the family separation policy. I like the wall. He's right that Mexico doesn't send us its best. Just kind of read portions of a Trump speech. Sure. How would that work out for you? I don't, I don't, I, well, I think students would uh, disagree and they'd have every right to disagree. Well, of, course, well, of course they would. I would never and, contest their right. As a matter of fact, even if they protested me, that's part of their First Amendment right. I, oh, d Bobby, you're not getting no debate from me on that. I, I believe in the free exchange of ideas and despite the efforts to shut us down and shut us up, we're, we're still doing it. But if you said that in a faculty meeting, no one would engage you. People would just say, you know what, you're some, I know you're African American, but you're obviously some kind of freaky bigot. You know what I mean? They would treat you like they treated Kanye West. Like, no one would engage you and say, let's talk through those ideas. You, you really think the family separation policy is a good idea? No. They would shout at you, wouldn't no, they? Well, I, I think people would, would disagree, and I think they would have every right to disagree. Yeah, yeah of course you know, but and I'm saying, I, and I think that like, the whole idea of the college is you say one thing, I say another, and then we talk about them to sure. get to wisdom. Isn't that the goal? Sure, but I, I but think they wouldn't the, do that. The, the, the conversation doesn't always have to be comfortable. Well, of that course means not. We, we can yell at each other. We can sit there and, and try to shut one another down. That's part of free speech. Of course. I guess the macro question is, have you ever met a group of people with smaller minds than those who teach at America's colleges, less open to new ideas, to challenging, really, truly challenging concepts. I, I think that's what we literally do on college campuses. Really? Is challenge concepts and challenge popular ideas. I think, number one, you know... Uh, How about this? One you go next faculty meeting and say, you know, just for the record, abortion's murder. Well, let me tell you... <laughs> Hold on, Tucker. I just want to see how that works. Let, let me tell you something. Every semester, uh -huh. we have abortion activists who come out and litter the campus with pictures of aborted fetuses. Yeah. And there are pregnant women who are, who are walking across campus crying and all these kinds of things. It's still their First Amendment right. Of course right it is. I'm just saying, I'm just wondering and, if your and colleagues... And no one complains. But what, oh, people complain. People complain. But what would your colleagues say if you said that? I'm sure they, they'd be disgusted and they, they'd, they'd be upset with me. Oh, some they, would. would. they some wouldn't would. be open to like... Like, why is oh, he no. saying that? What are the ideas they don't have, that? But they don't have to no, be of course, open because to it. But they should be, because they're not supposed to be small-minded. They're supposed to be broad-minded. No, these are people who, who have probably studied the issue, and they have <laughs> no, they a, a particular view. Come on. Oh, they're dumb people. People who study for a living uh, are dumb people. Yeah. Well, amazingly, that's the <laughs> irony wrapped in the riddle. You are none of those things, which is why we're so grateful that you come on the show. Thank right. you, Professor. Thanks a lot, Tucker. Good to see Appreciate you. it.